Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is lecture series 21, Introduction to IoT, dealing with components of vehicular IoT. Come let's go into the video. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. In last video, we have seen about an overview of the architecture of vehicular IoT. In this video, you are going to see about the components of vehicular IoT. Generally, when you tell that it is component, we end up with sensor and some electronic components. So here what sensor does, sensor is going to sense the internal and the external environment and give you the sensed data. So where the sense data will go to the processor. So the processor will come under the electronic components. Here the processor what it does is it will deliver the sensed data to the cloud. So where uh, from the real time the user can fetch the data from the cloud. So here what data are actually transferred to the processor is the sensor which is deployed on the on road which tells about the mismanagement of traffic, uh, status of the traffic at one road, is there any accident on the one road. So all these data are sensed by the sensor and it is provided centrally, uh, centrally to all the users through the processor. So now these are the components of the vehicular IoT, sensor, analytics, cloud and for computing, RSU that, you, that is your roadside unit, wireless connectivity, satellite. So here the sensor is one which is sensing and satellite is one through which the data are sent to the cloud and through this data which is in the cloud, analytics can be made. And these are the roadside units which communicate to the communicate with the sensor and tell you the status of the uh, um, traffic. Wireless connectivity, obviously, we need, if communication is required, you have to either use wired or wireless connectivity. So here you are opting for wireless connectivity. So seeing in deep about each of the component, the sensor is divided into internal and external as we have already seen. So the sensor is nothing but it is not like it, it is a vast area that we have to learn about. So sensor can be ultrasonic sensor, pressure sensor, humidity sensor, proximity sensor, temperature sensor, gas sensor, fire sensor, PIR sensor, accelerometer. So each of these sensors are used uh, in the vehicles for different purposes. Say suppose if I take accelerometer, it is used, it is going to detect the speed of the car or any vehicle we use if suppose if it is ultrasonic sensor it is going to tell the user if there is any object available on the road so we are we are into different purpose sensor is into different purpose so when you are considering internal sensor it is actually placed within the vehicle it internal means inside the vehicle so sitting the sensor sitting inside the vehicle what it does it is it will measure some parameters that is associated with the vehicle like fuel sensor if suppose the petrol goes down it will indicate seat belt sensor for the safety measures it will indicate so you have may, uh, many sensors like that inside your car to uh, maintain the safety and also about to know about the traffic management so all these sensor where it will be connected it will be connected to a processor so the sensor will send the data to the processor and the processor will take all the sensed data to a uh, to uh, to a particular place where an action can be done say suppose if i am not wearing the seat belt the sensor will sense that and send it to the processor and the processor is one who uh, which will uh, ask the that is it will trigger the event of giving a buzzer sound such that we will come to know that the seat belt is not owned, right? So this is how the internal sensor works. External sensor, what it does is, it will completely quantify all the information which is available outside your vehicle. So like based on some videos or images, cam uh, cameras are placed uh, at the traffic signals to, uh, to see which vehicle is following the uh, road rules, which, is, which vehicle is not following the road rules. Based on that, the RTO department will uh, generate a bill uh, telling that the penalty has to be paid for uh, not obeying the rules. So based on the images and stills, uh, the input will be given to the sensor where the, that sensor will take decision on it and those 
uh, captured images will be uh, pushed on to the processor and it will be saved in the cloud and the RTO office can take the data from the cloud and send the bill to the penalty if there is some mismanagement happening. So this, uh, this external sensor can be used for smart traffic system. So that based on the camera, uh, uh, the camera sensor, which is giving you the output based on that uh, over speeding of vehicle can be calculated. The uh, vehicles which overrule the uh, management system can be uh, captured. All those can be done. So next satellite. So why satellite is used? So this satellite will be used for tracking the vehicles. Like if there is any crash, then it will be detected in GPS system. When you when you are uh, traveling, if you are using maps, you could see uh, there will be a crash symbol provided. So how it is provided? It is provided through satellite system. So satellite will will suggest you those uh, uh, crashes through a image, which will be you which will be useful for the user to detect the system prior to the uh, prior to he or she starts the travel. And next is your wireless connectivity. So wireless connectivity, like obviously, if you want communication to happen, you have to go either wire or wireless. So here you can see a number of wireless technologies like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GSM, all those are wireless communication technology, which can be used in vehicular IoT system. So now what it does, it will take a decision based on the data that is taken by the sensor, it will take decision where to be sent and how uh, the transmission data speed is decided by this wireless connectivity. So it will be completely transmitting the sense data to multiple sensor or multiple road units or to the cloud or to the processor. So how fast it should be, that will be decided by your wireless connectivity. Next is your RSU that's a, that is roadside unit. So this roadside unit is nothing but it will be uh, having all the sensors, communication devices, cloud or fog computing, everything it will be having and it will start communicating with different vehicles. That is when uh, when a vehicle is having internal and external sensor, then this this is the one, this is the unit which communicates with different vehicles. So here you can use fog, devi fog devices which senses the data and takes the action immediately. And you have some static entity that is your RSU, it is a static entity which will be working with both the internal and external sensor and also the wireless connectivity devices and provide the uh, particular data to the user where the communication between two vehicles can be done. So that, that is what the, your roadside unit does. So next coming into cloud and for computing. So, you know, faster decision making is uh, done by for computing, like uh, uh, cloud of for computing. But rather than for computing, you prefer cloud computing because uh, the processing speed is on the higher side and the storage is also on the large scale. So, we, we prefer cloud computing. But for computing will give you faster uh, decision making. So, some system uses for computing also. So here, this for computing can be used, but at one end, it cannot be used when it is having heavyweight processor, heavyweight uh, vehicles, all those IoT, if a heavy, a heavy vehicle IoT architecture is done, then for, can, cannot, for computing cannot be a best option. You will be going for cloud because of storage area. And coming into advantages, as we have seen all the uh, vehicular components, you can come end up with telling that it is easy to track because of internal and external sensor. Fast decision making can be done because of your fog or cloud computing and uh, connection between your vehicles are done with your uh, roadside unit. So uh, to manage all these sensors, roadside units, devices, wireless connectivity, satellites, it is easy to manage. A user can easily manage the uh, traffic management, uh, management of traffic can be done easily. Safety purposes um, uh, is obviously looked into because of uh, alarms that is given by the sensors after sensing it. And proper records can be maintained because you are using a, a large scale uh, cloud computing in it. So records are permanently saved. So all these are the advantages that you can see in the vehicular IoT. Please be tuned for more information. Thank you.